Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a Kate Spade-inspired purse cake. And the first thing you want to do is you want to start off by making your ganache. I highly, highly recommend that you use some sort of chocolate ganache to cover this cake, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But first, I'm going to give you the really easy instructions on how to make this ganache. Now, I want to make it really clear, these are not candy melts in here. This is actual white chocolate. You need to use white chocolate chocolate and not candy melts. If you use candy melts, it's really not going to taste that great and I find that it doesn't whip up properly. For today's ganache, I'm not going to be adding in any butter component whatsoever. I'm strictly going to keep it white chocolate and heavy whipping cream. Really important that you use full fat whipping cream or else this won't work either. Now you'll notice here how it looks a little bit translucent and strange and it might seem like you're doing it wrong. You're doing just fine. You just need to keep whipping it until it becomes more opaque. Whenever I am making ganache that I'm actually going to spread or that I want to pipe, I use a higher ratio of chocolate to whipping cream. I find three to one generally works for this white chocolate. When things are sufficiently whipped, then you want to take some clear plastic wrap and put it directly on top so that a film does not form. While that's chilling, you want to start forming your cake. Now, the method I'm going to be using today can really be used for any type of purse cake. But this cutting portion here is really important because this is what's going to determine the shape of your cake. I also highly recommend that you use a very strong cake drum anytime you're doing carved cakes. Now this is a carved cake in the sense that we're going to stack cakes and then we're going to carve it out a little bit, but the purse that I chose to model this cake after is very, very simplistic in shape. So it's really not gonna be too crazy. I'm going to taper the cake layers slightly so that the bottom is the largest and the top is the smallest. But really there's not going to be a whole lot of difference between the layers, just very, very slight. Whenever you're making a carved cake, you do wanna make sure that you use something that's fairly strong for your cake recipe. I will leave this recipe down in the description box below. I wanna take this time to tell you how there really is no right and wrong when it comes to carving cakes. My friend and I, we do things like this all the time, standing side by side, and she does things completely differently than I would, but yet we still come out with a product that we both love. So really, anything you do is going to be right. Your proportions might also be really different for this cake, and that's completely fine as well. The cake board that I'm using today is an eight inch by eight inch cake board. All right, now it's time for the chocolate ganache. Now this has been setting in the fridge for about 30 minutes. You want your ganache set up to the point where it's not soupy anymore, but you also don't want it too hard that it becomes unspreadable. Now the reason that I'm using chocolate ganache for this is because it's going to create a really nice outer shell. It's going to be super smooth and you're not gonna get any buttercream leakage. You know what I'm talking about where the buttercream starts leaking out the side and then you create bumps and then you have to shave them down later. This is going to make everything super smooth right off the bat. I added a little bit of shortening to this after I let this set up for about 30 minutes in the fridge. The shortening is just to make sure that the fondant sticks very nicely. Now that zipper that I added on there, that little thin strip, I used a zipper mold for that. If you don't have a zipper mold, you could probably try to recreate this, but I will say that the zipper mold has a lot of definition in it that I just didn't feel like poking around with my cake tools. So I decided to buy a zipper mold. You'll notice that I put those two larger strips to cover up the seams of the zipper mold and now I'm adding on these flaps on the side. Now I did have to look at a picture of the purse to kind of see what was going on with the purse and most purses do follow this type of design. You'll notice that I'm kind of just eyeballing the panels and then I am cutting things off as I see fit. Also for this top edge here, you'll notice that I'm not using scissors or an X-Acto knife because I know I'll never be able to get a straight cut. So instead I fold over that edge. Pre-warning, you do have to make sure that you fold that edge fairly neat and tidily or else it will show up in the end product. I know when I first started making cakes, the idea of paneling and having to cut things off really was a little bit intimidating. But honestly, the shape of this purse cake is really, really easy to make things nice and straight. And when you start cutting, it actually feels very, very satisfying. Fondant is a lot more forgiving than you might think if you've never worked with it before. 
after adhering things to my liking, I'm just going in with my paintbrush with just a little bit of water and making sure that everything is nice and secure. A little pro tip, if your fondant is ever too sticky, just add a little bit of cornstarch, and if it's too dry, just add a little bit of shortening. There's a few different things you can do to make your purse cake look really realistic. One of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm doing some stitching. Now for some reason I can't find my rolling stitching tool, so I'm kind of just going at it with this little tool here and poking the edges to create stitches. Another thing that you can do as well is you can use a mold that has kind of a leather pattern on it and imprint it on there. I unfortunately don't have one of those, so I'm just leaving it nice and smooth. What I'm doing right now is I'm using 18 gauge wire and some floral tape to create the handles for the purse. This is going to go into your cake, but it's really, really important that you have it really nice and stable before you put anything in. The reason that I am using two pieces of the wire and then stitching it together like this is because if I use one, it's not going to be long enough to go right directly through the cake. You want the handles to be deep enough so that nothing is going to come out and you also want them to still pop out the top. So it does have to be quite long. The most important thing about this tutorial, if you learn nothing else, is this little tip here. Put two plastic straws in where you want your straps. Then you're going to cut them down so that they're no longer visible. Really make sure you get them deep into the cake. Then you're going to insert that 18 gauge wire handle that you made earlier. What this does is it makes sure that the wires don't spread apart and end up breaking your cake. Those straws keep them nice and contained. Then to create the actual strap of the purse, all you have to do is you have to pinch those edges together, add your stitching, and make sure that you have kind of like square boxes at the bottom right on the purse. I find that Kate Spade uses this design a lot. Anytime you're working and things aren't sticking, just add a little bit of water. You really don't even need an adhesive edible glue. You can totally skip out on this part. The only reason I'm actually adding flowers to the top of this is because I wanted my cake super stable and I added in that wooden dowel in the center. I could have cut down the wooden dowel, but I kind of knew that I wanted to add a little bit something extra to this purse cake. Also, if you guys have watched any of my videos, then you know how much I love this flower cutter. It is so simple and so easy and really streamlines roses. Of course, there's lots of other ways to make roses. I'm probably going to do a video about that in the near future, but this is the way I like to use when I'm in a little bit of a hurry and I don't need my roses to be super detailed or one way or another. I steamed my cake earlier, so these roses are going to adhere to the cake very nicely without me having to add any more adhesive or water. Now I'm going to create an iconic Kate Spade bow. It appears to me that she has about three bow designs that she likes to use. This one seems a little bit more modern, and a little bit more fresh to me, and really just relies on straight edges. It's very, very easy. So all I did was I kind of curved that edge just a little bit, but I'm not folding in any other part of my bow. And then I'm just taking a thinner piece of fondant and wrapping it around the center. It is really that easy. I used to wait until things were fully, fully dried, but I honestly just made this bow and because I steamed my cake and waited a few minutes, it's so easy to adhere. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make this iconic tag that is on some of her purses as well. What's going to make your cake look realistic is making sure that you add in all of these details. Now you could choose to add this tag or you could choose to add something else like a keychain. Whatever is going to make your cake look most realistic, then do it.
Honestly, this little tag at the front was causing me so much issue. I think I did it over at least 10 times. I just wasn't happy with the way it was looking. So I finally decided on a white tag. I really wanted to make sure that this part really popped. I also love the way Kate Spade does play with color blocking in her purses. So I decided to do a nod to that and add that in. You can pretty much use whatever material you want to do the writing, but I decided to use my water activated edible paints. Time to talk about pricing and sizing. So for the price of this cake as is, it would be $250. Now please keep in mind that all of my pricing is in Canadian. I would say this amount of cake can probably feed anywhere from 15 to 30 people. It really depends on what else you're serving to your guests. Now, if you're making a custom order and somebody needs to feed a certain amount of people, I would kind of gauge the size based on the size of cake board that you use. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. 